This presentation is on extensor mechanism, rupture, quadriceps, patellar tendon, and also tibial tubercle fractures, bipartite patella. I'm Mary Lloyd Ireland, professor of orthopedic surgery at the University of Kentucky in Lexington. These are diagnoses that can be made clinically, typically, don't require an MRI scan. If you listen to the patient, they'll usually have jumped down from a... Um, layup or basketball or running quick and have an eccentric force on their quadriceps that overcomes the tendons either at the quad superiorly or the patellar tendon typically inferiorly uh, almost a periosteal avulsion that I'll show you or a fracture if they're skeletally immature of the tibial tubercle. What about a bipartite patella? This is a 15-year-old male who had a one-year history of right knee pain. Uh, he was unable to play basketball because of this pain. Whenever he would stop, cut, change direction, he had pain in the superolateral aspect of his right knee. On physical exam, it uh, was pretty much normal, no effusion, ligaments were stable. He was specifically painful on palpation at the superolateral border of his patella. And that was it. Patellar tracking was central, reproducible pain over that area of the bone, which was subcutaneous. And this is what his right patella looked like. You can see where the patella looks a little bigger, maybe, which is uh, cons consistent with his having a bipartite patella. Looks a little flatter, and then superolaterally is where the bipartite fragment is. So it's right here, and that's exactly where he hurts. So this is his patella, the quad tendon, the lateral retinaculum, pull on that area. And in some patients, in basketball athletes or planted side foot in kickers, uh, soccer athletes, that retinaculum can tug on that bipartite patellar piece and create a stress fracture. Not uh, too common, but one to think about if that's exactly where they hurt. And here are his radiographs. Uh, you can see his patellar views down here. Don't really see a lot. Don't see a lot in the lateral. But the AP view shows you the patella in the typical classification. Um, and the most common spot is a superolateral patellar uh, piece. Uh, SAPE classification, about 75% is that, uh, that area. Uh, but if you look here, maybe it's a little wider than you would usually think. So you can think of a stress fracture of the patella where the retinaculum is yanking on it. The tendon is connecting right here. And so this is a stress fracture of the bipartite patellar piece. The treatment for that is you could do relative rest, but oftentimes these patients come in and have been having pain for a year like he had. So the treatment basically is an exam, x-rays. I did do a MRI scan in this individual. Uh, he really only had patellar pain, but it can give you an idea about that fibrous um, connection in the bipartite patella. And you can see how there is a little signal here uh, indicating there's some acute inflammatory or an acute uh, tissue process. Uh, and again, you don't see much on the patellar view. Uh, and on that slice here you do. So basically the treatment for this is to remove that piece of the patella. And this is, you um, can't do a uh, knee case without arthroscopy, or at least I can't. I have trouble doing that. So uh, a needle should not go through the patella, right? So we're pushing on his patella, and then here comes the spinal needle, and that's that area of the fibrous union of the bipartite patella. So basically the retinaculum yanks on that piece, pulls on that piece, putting tensile forces on the piece. And doing an arthroscopic um, uh, look first uh, helps identify where your incision needs to be and then you can very easily identify the piece. But you can see this piece is moving when I push on it, uh, and that should not be, do be doing that. It should be one piece only. And so that needle goes through that fibrous uh, union of the bipartite patella, and then we do an open excision of that. And I guess someone could, if they're patient enough, do an arthroscopic excision. Uh, in, uh, removing the pull of the lateral retinaculum. So this is where I started with an arthroscopic resection of that. So the lateral retinaculum tugs on that piece, um, and when we do an excision of it, we uh, we cut through the lateral retinaculum and just uh, sew it back up directly to the uh, uh, patella. So remove the piece, the patient's happy, and they do very well. 
unusual, but think about it if somebody's doing eccentric loading uh, with a planted foot uh, and have a bipartite patella with the location superolateral, and that's where they hurt. This is the incision that we use, so we don't use a very big incision. Uh, again, I localized that with the um, spinal needle and through the scope. Everything else in his joint was normal, and then we just incise, and you actually come through that with a freer or a knife and just remove that piece and then repair the capsule. And this is the piece itself. So I've uh, uh, did some of the um, uh, uh, some of the dissection with the uh, scope and a burr, and then this is what the piece looks like. Uh, sometimes the pieces you think are, are actually bigger, but you need to take out that entire piece. So this was like a two centimeter uh, uh, bipartite patellar stress fracture piece that we took out and do a direct repair. I don't leave the retinaculum open or the capsule open. Repair it. So make the diagnosis. Treat acute extensor mechanism ruptures with repair. Treat anterior knee pain. Um, repetitive microtrauma without surgery, but the history and the physical are key in these extensor mechanism problems. For more information, uh, this is my.com. You can visit the presentations, publications I've done throughout my career, and also donate to my own foundation, the James E. Ireland Foundation, named in memory of my father, and a new foundation, the IF Foundation, Ireland Foundation. Thank you for your attention.